Hey guys, this is Mel, and I am back to talk about Shadowhunters, this time episode 104, titled Raising Hell, which premiered on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016 on Freeform. Just a reminder, guys, there are there's a big chance I am going to spoil anything that comes from the first three books of the Mortal Instruments series. So, it's been a while since I've read them, but chances are if I... If I remember anything, it's going to be from those three books, so just a heads up. Uh, but aside from that, let's get started with the 10-minute clock, and let's begin. So, um, what is something new that we learned in this episode? So, basically, the big thing about this episode is the fact that Magnus Bane is who Clary kind of figures out is the one who took her memory. So, that's her solid lead after having memory fragments of the name Magnus, and then Simon connects it to what Camille the Vampire had said, Magnus Bane. So it leads them with their lead to go find Magnus Bane to get her memories back. And he tells them that he fed them to a memory demon to protect her, to protect him from Valentine finding out. So she's more determined to go retrieve those memories from a very powerful demon. Turns out payment for that requires a special memory, but things go a bit haywire and it's come to de- it comes down to the point basically that Clary has to decide save Chase and lose the chance of getting her memories back or lose Chase and still find a way to get her memories. So she decides to kill the demon which saves Chase. So now she has lost all her memories that Magnus had taken from her. So that's the downside for that. But we also see Magnus showing an interest in Alec um, when he saves him twice now. So that's another fun thing and it appears that Jace might have gotten a hint as to just where Alex's feelings for him lie and it's because of that most beloved memory payment deal thing so um moving on to a side um plot it has to do with Simon dealing with the um side effects I guess you can say of being with the vampires he's basically he seemed more agitated more aggressive um he definitely tries to leave the institute and goes home where we see him at home we meet his mom we see Maureen again and he confirms to us that he is 18 so there's that but he's definitely shying away from sunlight so it looks like he's maybe in limbo between being a human and being a vampire so he's in some sort of transition but he definitely seems to have some fixation of blood or some reminders of it so there's that also simon learns that maureen actually wants to date him so that was a little surprising but he's more focused on the fact that something is up with him after the whole stint with the vampires and by the end of the episode he actually ends up at hotel du more with camille watching and being pleased that he's back so there's that so back on to the runes um segment i didn't pick up on any names but there was one rune that appeared on um within the institute hodge um um i guess covered or traced this rune in order to open up a locked vault that showed up the they showed the necklace so the rune on the the lock I guess you can say. And then there's another rune that we don't actually see, but um, I'm assuming it's a protection rune, but it's the one that Jace um, uh, drew on Clary and she screams from the pain of it. And you did warn her that it's going to be, it's going to hurt. So there are those two runes. I'm assuming it's protection and um, locking for the two of them. So um, there's that. Um, if you know the official names or what they look like, Uh, Hit me up with a link in the comments below so I can have a look. Thanks for that in advance. Um, So, most shocking moment of the episode? It it has to be the fact that Clary didn't get any of her memories back. I knew that she wasn't going to get all of them back, otherwise, that's it. The season might as well just be cut in half. But I expected her to get something back. Like, when she went to the City of Bones to deal with the Silent Brothers, she got that one memory back that revealed that her father was Valentine. So I thought something similar would happen in this episode. She'd go against the memory demon. She may not get all of her memories back, but maybe she'd get a, another memory that is a puzzle piece that she can use in trying to figure out what things, what what her mom was up to and stuff like that. But we didn't get anything like that. So that was kind of surprising um, for me. Um, so top three favorite moments. I'll move on to that quickly. Um, first one has to be Magnus Bane. I'm glad we got to see him again. And... 
just to, we definitely in this episode get to get more of a sense of his personality, his, the way he does things, the way he views things. I really like that. And it was just fun since he's over 300 years old, so it's great to see his take on the world, how he views how the politics of the Shadow Hunters goes, and just stuff like that. I just really liked that he was back and he was like the focused guest, I guess you can say, since aside from the main four that we've been dealing with. Um, another favorite moment has to be that parabatai tracking. I really like that it was brought up. I really like that even Clary and Izzy mentioned the fact that it's kind of gives off an intimate vibe, the parabatai's, but I really like the intensity and how it basically um, insinuates that parabatai, anything is more powerful than when you're doing it on your own type thing. So um, I really like that. It's another way to showcase just how powerful that connection between the two of them is. So, yeah. Um, third thing I like, and I shouldn't like it, but I do, and it's at the very beginning. It's the the Chase, Clary, and Simon love triangle thing. When Clary is um, she woke up from a nightmare to Simon, she think it was Ch- she thinks it's Chase at first or Jace at first, but it's really Simon. So then they're talking about how she's glad that he's okay even though she's sorry that she dragged him into this and they're they you can see they're really close bond between them and you seriously you would think that there's more between them than just being best friends so you really show this close bond their connection and everything and how they're trying to work things out with the nightmare fragments that she's getting all the while chase is eavesdropping outside and he seemed pissed off at the close connection between um, Clary and Simon so I just found that amusing and it's very obvious that and then later on when they were fighting to keep Simon in the institute well Chase is just saying he can go but I'm not saving him again it's very obvious that these two guys do not like each other they butt heads with each other and I really don't see how Clary doesn't see why they don't butt heads they why they are butting heads with each other so um it was just amusing just to see the the love triangle in a sense. Like, we as the audience know it's a love triangle, but only two-thirds of it knows that there's a love triangle in progress, so there's that. Um, so, um, top peeved, peeved moments of the episode. First one has to be the fact that there's only one scene with Luke. He wasn't in the last episode. We only got him briefly in the second episode. So, the fact that we only see one scene with Luke and his partner Alaric and they're talking about how he needs to stay a cop and how he's under a microscope after all his witnesses are being killed off and that's it no clue it's obvious he has no clue where Clary or Jocelyn are but it seems like he's still going about everyday life and yeah so it's just annoying that we only got to see the one scene with him but yeah, I don't know. And the second peed thing is the fact that we got confirmation that Dot is dead. I didn't I didn't like that. I like Dot. I wanted to see more of her. So the fact that she's actually dead is like, boo. I don't like that at all. I'm going to miss her. She was a short-lived character, sadly, even though she was immortal. So there's that. Uh, moving on. What moment will I remember most as I look back on this episode? Magnus Bane's return. Enough said, for sure. Um... And, okay, um, random questions. First one, Magnus is interested in Alec. It's very clear in how he reacts to Alec just entering the room. So, how long do you think it'll take before something happens between them? Or will it just be a slow build between them because it's a TV show? Definitely the, um, the progress of what happened in the books would definitely be different from how we see it on the TV show. So I'm just wondering how what you guys think or how long it will take for that to happen. Um, so there's that. Second question. Clary remembered fragments of when Magnus took her memories. The nightmare she, as she calls it. So is there a chance that she could recover her memories by herself? I mean, if she was able to remember fragments of when Magnus took her memories, then why can't she remember the rest of it like what if what magnus said he didn't just steal her memories what if he just put like a really solid block of it block on them and then he just took a copy of like the more solid version of it and then fed it to the memory demon and then like 
the residue of those memories is still in Clary's mind. What if it's something like that? Um, it, maybe that way she can recover her memories over time or due to certain trigger exposures or something. I don't know. Um, next question. Um, how far do you think Simon is in, is in his vampire transition? With his reaction of blood and sunlight in this episode, it's very obvious that he's going down that path, but what more does he have to do to become a full vampire? Uh, yeah, so I'm worried about that. It may seem like he's going to be stuck being 18 forever. And there's the timer. So close, so close. So predictions quickly. Um, based off the one promo for episode 105, we definitely see Clary being taken while under Alex's protection, and it looks like Jace is not pleased by that. We also see Simon being used as leverage again to get Clary to talk, and it seems like Melanor the Sealy is back. So um, that's a lot of things that happened for sure. Um, on, on an overall standpoint, I think that there's definitely going to be more tension between Jace and Clary and Alec, for sure. Um, more so with Jace protect, uh, defending Clary to Alec and Alec not standing Clary and therefore upsetting Jace. So it's just going to be another triangle right there. So um, that's definitely going to progress and intensify even more. And it's, yeah. Um, another prediction overall is that we're going to see Simon still dealing with whatever the vampires did to him. I still think he's in some stage of transition. Don't know how long until the others clue into that fact. But, um, yeah, it's not really looking good for Simon. He's definitely can't go, he can't go back to how things were before all this um, happened. Also, I forgot to mention, Clary actually made a point in this episode of stating that um, it hasn't even... It's either hasn't been a week or it has been a week since her 18th birthday, since she's been introduced to the Shadow Shadowhunter world. So at least we have that kind of a, a standpoint timeline wise. So that's pretty good. So at that point is maybe seven days or less that she's been in this world. So I really like like those types of indicators to help um help with um timeline progressions and stuff like that so uh that's about it what did you guys think of the episode um was it what you expected um is there anything particular that you liked about it let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear about it also let's keep this conversation going uh, uh i'd love to talk about this with you if you've read the books let me know if there's anything that differed from the episode to the book or if you're a tv show watcher only tell me what your own predictions are without any other influence outside of that also, don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, please, uh, and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to check out my other videos if you have any other shows that you're interested in that I cover. And if you want any other news or anything at all about Shadowhunters, uh, check out my Tumblr page. I reblog whatever comes across my dashboard that's Shadowhunter, Shadowhunter related, so check that out. I also reblog episode synopses, promos, web clips, sneak peeks, any of that. So links for those specifically will be down below. Um, and yeah, so that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I do apologize that this is posted later than usual. Uh, once again, I have to wait a little bit longer before I can watch the episode. But uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. Hope you come back again next week to see what I have to say about the show. And until then, this is Mel wishing you a great day, great week, wherever you are. And hope you see you soon. Bye for now.